Hi, today we are looking at section 9.1, which is solving trigonometric equations graphically. So for this, we'll be utilizing our graphing calculators and we will be looking at trigonometric equations and finding our solutions for them. Now, when given our equations and solving graphically, there's two main strategies. One strategy is move everything to one side of the equation what this does is it makes the other side of the equation equal to zero. So when we graph, we're solving for x-intercepts because they are where y equals zero. The other strategy is to graph each side of the equation as separate equations and find the coordinates where the two graphs intersect each other. So we'll do some examples. So first example, we've got two cos squared x equals five cos x plus one over the domain from zero to two pi and determine the general solution. So for this one, I might, for example, move everything to one side of the equation. If I do that, that gives us two cos squared x minus five cos x minus one equals zero. So because it equals zero when we graph it, we're going to find our x-intercepts. So I'll just draw what a window in my graphing calculator will look like. Now for this, because it tells us we're going from zero to two pi, on our x-axis, we're going to go from zero to two pi. Now because essentially if these line up perfectly, we could have a maximum value of say 10, I would go to from positive 10 down to negative 10, which means we have our x-axis in the middle. And when I enter this in my graphing calculator, that gives me a graph that looks something like this. So we'll use the tools in our graphing calculator to find out this x-intercept, which ends up being 1.76. And then this one here, that ends up being 4.53. Now, because cos has a period of 2 pi, and we have not changed our graph by compressing it horizontally, we know that this will have a period of 2 pi. So these solutions will repeat every 2 pi. So our general solution would be x is equal to 1.76 plus 2 pi k where k is an integer, as well as x is equal to 4.53 plus 2 pi k, where once again, k is an integer. Okay, next example, we've got sine of 3x equals 0 from 0 to 2 pi and state our general solution. Okay, so this one, everything's only moved to one side, so we're finding our x-intercepts, so we will graph this. So I'll draw out what my window will look like. Now, once again, we're given this domain from zero to two pi. Now our graph of sine, we don't have a number in front, so it's an amplitude of one, so I'd probably go from say two to negative two, so we can clearly see everything going on in our graph. And then we'll put this equation in our graphing calculator. And when we graph it, we should end up with something that looks something like this. Once again, using our tools on our graphing calculator, we find that this is 1.05. This here is 2.09. This is 3.14. This is 4.19. This is 5.24. So 
So our general solution, because we haven't shifted this vertically at all, is going to have equal distances apart for every single point. So we can say x is equal to 1.05 times, k, or sorry, plus essentially, we know that this is pi, these are equal distances apart. So each of these is pi over three apart. So we can say, plus pi over three times k. Where k is any integer. Next example, we've got self cos x equals x squared. So in this situation where we have a function that's not a trigonometric function and a function that is, I would probably leave these on separate sides of the equation. So we'd graph y equals cos x and y is equal to x squared. Now, based off of what we have here, when we figure out our values for our graph, I would probably have it centered at zero, zero. And for example, go to say positive 1.5 and negative 1.5, because we know cos isn't going to be any higher than one. So that will guarantee that we see our full coast graph. And then going these ways, I might do the exact same thing horizontally, because if we've got x squared, by the time we square 1.5 or negative 1.5, we'll be larger than this. So when we graph this, we're going to end up with our quadratic that looks something like this. And cos over that same section will look like this. So now we'll find where our graph intersects here and here. And that's in this case going to give us negative 0 0.824 for our x value and positive 0 0.824 for our x value. So those would be our two solutions. Okay, so that is it for solving with the graphing calculator. In the next section, we will be going over solving these algebraically.